Hello everybody and welcome to our Sunday morning prayer um, and if you would like to join in with the words then you'll find a copy at a link on our Facebook page but if you haven't got the words just join in where you can. Let us worship God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, direct our thoughts and teach us to pray. Lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God of love, passionate and strong, tender and careful, watch over us and hold us all the days of our life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So we come now to a time of confession where we can bring to God all of those things this week that we know we need forgiveness for. And we can take that forgiveness and know that we can walk away with a clean start. So let's take a moment to bring those things to God. Come, let us return to the Lord and say, Lord, our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us, deliver us from judgment, bind up our wounds and revive us. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as a sign of that forgiveness and clean start, Put the stone into the water. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our reading today is from James chapter 3. Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Over the past few years, watching the spread of a microscopic virus that has led to illness, death and economic devastation, we have come to understand how something incredibly small can lead to huge consequences. Something tiny can run wild and cause immense damage. And each of us possesses a small weapon of our own. 
something that makes up a trivial percentage of our body, but has the power to savage and wound multiple people in minutes, if not seconds. This weapon corrupts and destroys. A single word from the tongue in our mouths has the power to set a whole life on fire. As James writes, Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and by itself is set on fire by hell. The book of James is known by some scholars to be a book of wisdom in the, in the Bible. And in the Bible, wisdom books such as Proverbs, Song of Songs and Ecclesiastes are made up of wise sayings and advice about how to live life as a godly person. They make use of images from nature and real life so that people can connect fully with the advice they give. And this is what James does as he tries to get his reader to understand how dangerous that weapon in our mouth is. He tells us that fig trees can't bear olives, grapevines can't bear figs, you can't get fresh water from a salt water spring. Even the wilderness has its rules, but the tongue doesn't. The tongue is lawless. The tongue can't be relied on like nature can because the tongue has two identities. It can curse and it can bless. The tongue can give you both sides of a coin. The tongue can be like an untamed wild animal and can run rampant and cause destruction if it's left uncontrolled. If we're honest with ourselves, there will be times that we can think of in our lives where we've let our tongues run wild. We've been drawn into gossip. We've insulted someone. We've said something to intentionally hurt someone. We've said things behind someone's back that we would never say to their face. Maybe we've even said something we can't take back that has destroyed a relationship. You might have been on the receiving end of someone else's words and know firsthand the firestorm or the hurt they have caused. We all have the capacity to use our tongue for less than holy purposes. But as Voltaire, and possibly also Spider-Man's uncle says, with great power comes great responsibility. As Christians we are called to encourage, to build up, to love our neighbour as ourselves. We might possess a wild and dangerous weapon, but we have both the power and the responsibility to tame it, to make it safe, to make it a blessing, not a curse. We have the power to strike the match or not. In Matthew 15, Jesus tells us that the things that come out of our mouth come from our heart. Our words show us who we really are as a person. They show if we are someone who loves, who is being transformed by love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and the self-control growing in us, or if we are not. And of course we are not perfect. None of us have yet had our hearts entirely transformed by the Holy Spirit. But we are on our way. We are on the journey. And as we grow closer to Jesus and the love he has for us, the more and more we will reflect that love in our words without effort. But for now, as we are being transformed, as we are growing, we have the chance to make choices. We hold the matches in our hands or in our mouth. We have the, tra the chance to try to tame the wilderness, to douse the fire, the chance to show who we want to be, even if we're not there yet. We have the chance to praise and bless, to encourage and rejoice, rather than to strike the match and use the tongue as a weapon to curse gossip, insult and tear down. So this week, remember, 
that the tiniest word can start a fire, that an uncontrolled tongue can be a weapon of destruction. And intentionally choose your words to reflect who you are being transformed by the Holy Spirit to be. Find words to encourage, to show love, to inspire, to comfort, to bring peace and joy and praise. Avoid those situations where you know you'll be drawn into gossip and to tear down. This week, may your words bring life and blessing and hope. And may the words of others bring life and blessing and hope to you. Amen. So as we remember the God who is transforming us, we say together our affirmation of faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world. We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. So we come now to our prayers of intercession. And we'll move this slightly into the background so that we can fit our candles in. So let's pray as we think of how we use our words for hope and blessing this week. We pray for those who use their words to speak up for those in need. For MPs, for social justice activists, for community advocates. May their words be a blessing and a source of hope. We pray for those who are called to speak with the ill, the dying and those who grieve. We pray for chaplains, medical staff, funeral directors, counsellors. May their words be a blessing and a source of hope. We pray for those who speak up for our world and its future, for those who fight for the recognition of climate change and those who educate others about the environment. May their words be a blessing and a source of hope. We pray for those who teach and who use their words to open up worlds of opportunity. We pray especially for teachers in our own communities and in the church. May their words be a blessing and a source of hope. We pray for those we have hurt with our words, for the relationships we have damaged and the people we have drawn into gossip. We ask for forgiveness. This week, may those people know words of blessing and hope. And we pray for ourselves. God, make us aware of our language this week. May we use our words for love. And may we receive words of love and encouragement from those around us. This week, may our words be a blessing and a source of hope. 
Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessing, honour and glory be yours here and everywhere, now and forever. Amen. So this week, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.